but we feel a lot of energy in the community around supporting our community and supporting our neighbors. We feel like, um, like that's not going to go away. I feel like that, uh, that will contribute to keeping the food system going and, and being in a more uh, resilient and stronger place. All right, it's April 3rd and I am with Dave Walker. Dave is the development director of Blue Ridge Women in Agriculture, whose mission is to build an equitable and sustainable local food system here for the high country of North Carolina um, and to increase demand for local food. Um, all this stuff is super important for keeping us healthy. And I really wanted to have Dave come on and tell us a little bit about um, how the local food system and the local food economy is being impacted by this COVID-19 crisis. Um, what are some things we need to be aware of and be thinking about in this space? Um, so I hope you're doing well, Dave. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, I really just wanted to start by asking, how is the local food um, economy, the local food system, your mission within that, how is that being affected by this situation? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, one of the important uh, things about local food is resiliency and diversity. And you see that in the farmers that we work with and that they grow 70 plus different varieties of vegetables throughout the year because um, vegetables uh, grow at different times of the year. And um, the same with our market channels. And so our farms up here, we're really fortunate that they worked hard to establish a vibrant summer farmer's market, um, now a winter farmer's market. Uh, lots of restaurants uh, over the past several years have been purchasing local food. And um, with Blue Ridge Women in Agriculture, we operate the Food Hub, which is an online farmer's market. And so farmers have uh, a diversity of market channels. So over the last several weeks, we've seen a disruption in several of those market channels. A lot of farmers depend on um, restaurant sales and those have changed um, as restaurants close temporarily. We also uh, postponed the winter farmers market for the last three weeks uh, until we could figure out a better way to do that in an outdoor setting. And so that was a disruption for many farmers. Fortunately, um, the online farmer's market has been able to operate over the last several weeks. And we've seen an exponential increase in the number of customers who are using the Food Hub and in the sales that they're um, contributing back into the local economy. What is the Food Hub? Yeah, the Food Hub is an online farmer's market where customers can go online uh, from Thursday through Monday at midnight and they place an order um, picking from 500 plus different products, um, vegetables, meat, eggs, milk, baked goods, and they load up a basket. And then on Tuesday and Wednesday, farmers bring their products to the food hub, and we essentially shop for customers and reorganize, reorganize those products into baskets for customers to pick up uh, from 11.30 to 6 p.m. on Wednesday afternoon in downtown Boone. Got so it's, it. a really, it's a really convenient and easy way for customers to shop. And especially now, it's a way for, um, for folks to get fresh, healthy local food in a contactless environment. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, you guys are in a really good spot to fill a very important need right now during a time like this. So has this online, have these online sales offset what was lost from restaurants or how's that shaking out? It, it may be a little too early to tell. Um, I feel like the high country is in a good position because we do have established um, different market channels where other communities, they may only have uh, one farmer's market or um, they may be dependent on just like one, uh, one buyer uh, where we've uh, been able to establish these different ways that farmers can get their goods to consumers. And so um, in some respects, we're a little bit more resilient, um, but it's still uh, a significant challenge for our growers right now. Any idea how many farmers we're talking about, how many suppliers in this area? And then also I'm curious, how big is the market, like the people that are really intentional about buying local food? I'm, I'm just curious if you can give us, give us an idea of the size of this. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the food hub... Uh, impacts around 
70 different producers. And so it's hyper local. It's, it's super local. And um, a little bit more, more broad, uh, there are probably 100 to 150 growers in the high country region who are uh, growing and producing local food, selling um, at the Ash County Farmers Market, at the Blowing Rock Farmers Market, the Watauga County Farmers Market. Um, those growers um, contribute back into the local economy. And so they really depend on other businesses in order to stay open. So it's a, so it's a complex kind of web, really, is what you're saying. Is there anything about how this system is being affected that surprised you? You know, a silver lining of this is that we've uh, we've been able to connect more um, more customers to the online farmers market that the Food Hub operates. Um, five times as many uh, customers are um, are using the Food Hub now than they did last year. Wow! Um, so our hope is that um, these three hundred or so new customers are. Um, going to get hooked on local food and are going to be um, excited about purchasing local food in the future. Out of curiosity, are you guys doing anything or is anyone doing anything to, to try to ensure that these people do get hooked on local food? Yeah, we, um, you know, uh, we, uh, we talk about this a lot about the food hub and that you don't have the, um, the face certification that you do at the at your typical tailgate farmers market, and so because it's an online farmers market and the the farmer isn't there, you don't have an opportunity to interact with them in person and ask them questions about how they grew their tomato or about how they uh, treat their livestock um, that you might be able to at a tailgate market. And so we uh, we've been building in these other types of ways that consumers and producers can get to know each other. Um, through sampling and, and taste test at the pickup day or through um, farm to plate dinners. And a lot of that activity has been placed on hold. And so we're trying to think of new ways that we can better tell the story of how food is grown in Watauga County and it gets to somebody's plate in Watauga County. Um, wow. And so that's one of our challenges uh, for the next year. But we feel a lot of energy in the community around supporting our community and supporting our neighbors. We feel like um, like that's not going to go away after uh, after we move forward, and so um, I feel like that uh, that will contribute to keeping the food system going and and being in a more uh, resilient and stronger place towards the summer. Wow, that is super interesting. So speaking of farmers markets, uh, the farmers market is going to be active tomorrow, right? Yeah, that's right. We um, uh, Boone's Winter Farmers Market. It typically runs uh, December through April, every weekend at the Watauga Ag Center in downtown Boone. Um, the Ag Center. It's a conference center. For the last three weekends, we've um, we've decided not to hold it because it's such a small space and people are uh, so tight together. Mm -hmm. We've also been working with our partners across the state. To understand how um, how they're able to put on a farmers market in a safe and um, an effective way that uh, minimizes the the contact between different people, whether it's customers and producers or different people. And so um, we've redesigned the market and have been working with the town of Boone and the Watauga County Farmers Market Board to have the farmers market set up at Daniel Boone Park where it's typically held on Saturdays in the summer. And so it'll be in an outdoor location. Producers will be spread out 10 feet apart. Um, there will be limitations on how many people can be in a booth at a time. Uh, there won't be any food eaten on site. Uh, a lot of the food will be, or all of the food will be prepackaged and bunched. And um, it'll be handled in a different way than it is in the past. This is an interesting space that I'm hearing you talk about, and that's really just kind of hitting me of, of technology intersecting with with agriculture and old old style of of getting our food. You know, any thoughts there on what's happening in that space? Across the state, a lot of farmers are switching to to online uh, stores, 
And a lot of local food farmers, they, um, they establish their business around tailgate farmers markets and around selling to restaurants. And, and that landscape's changed. And so um, they're shifting to new ways of how to connect to consumers. And um, local food, it's, it's uh, in my experience, it's been super inconvenient. Um, and uh, it's hard to access local food, uh, especially if your community relies on just one Saturday farmer's market. Up here, we're fortunate that we have other ways to access it. But um, local food in general, it's hard to, um, to connect with it. And I feel like this disruption and challenge is uh, forcing the local food system and the local food economy to think of new ways and to innovate to connect to local food. In conclusion, is there anything that gives you some some hope right now, some extra hope? I like how our uh, how our communities coming together uh, to support each other. Uh, I knew that about Boone. I've always found uh, since I've lived here uh, that that's something special about Boone and something that makes it unique. And um, it's it's really true and apparent um, right now. And so that gives me a lot of inspiration and encouragement uh, for the future. That's great. That's great. Um, I really appreciate your, your perspective on this and, and the insight that you can bring to it. Yeah, well, thanks for, um, for talking this afternoon. I appreciate it.